the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. Robbie covered the Atlanta Hawks for a while. Mm-hmm. Grew up in the Atlanta area, right? That's a correct fair sentiment. Uh, correct. The Atlanta area. Uh, this over under is 46 and a half. They acquired DeJounte Murray this off season. They did. Lost uh, Kayvon to the Sacramento Kings. Who, by the mm-hmm. way, we didn't talk about getting Kevin Herter with the Kings. Right. He's I mean, good. Like, good. I love Kevin acquisition. Herter. Good one. Yeah. Just, it's a killer acquisition. Not a lot of defense. Um, he's not terrible at defense. He's he's okay. He's fine on defense. He's a fine, defense. but he's like a fine team defender, and that's the problem yeah. in Sacramento is there's not going to be a lot of team defense. Anyway, it's a lot of Sacramento talk at the top of the Hawks section. Um, Hawks are 46 and a half. Feels right. I think I lean under, he's, like we talk about 45 wins. You just saw what happened in this NFL game. No, what happened? I don't have it up. Oh my goodness. The Chargers got down to the three. Oh, sweet. and no, not my Chargers. Uh, not my Chargers. Yeah. Justin Herbert just threw a oh. interception touchdown. Oh, not my Chargers. 99. That's very Chargers, Chargers, though. That's extremely that is, Chargers. That's that is Phil solid. Rivers somewhere felt a disturbance in the force. Uh <laughs> That's some Phil Rivers stuff right there. Nine nine yard. Pick okay. Six. Oh That's my it. god. Okay. Let's uh let's go to the uh, Atlanta Hawks though. As you said, number feels pretty close to me. I I, I wouldn't bet this number at all. No. And by the way, again, I'm not allowed to bet for people who don't know, but uh, we do this because it's fun. It is. The Hawks won 43 games last year. It's worth they knowing. did. They uh. Right. We're really bad on defense, really good on offense. I'll be honest. Do you have any worries about like the DeJounte Trey Young pairing? Like this sure. has gone like under the radar that the Hawks traded like a billion first round picks for DeJounte Murray, who has two years yeah. left on his contract, and yeah. like might not be an ideal fit with Trey Young on offense. Um, yeah. So I wrote about this when they got traded. And the thing I wrote about was their success is dependent on how much Trey Young gives here. The problem is Trey Young has never shown a propensity to want to do that. Now, I think it helps that DeJounte Murray is a guy that he clearly wanted. They're clutch guys. They know each other. Um, yeah. I think there's a better chance that Trey seeds some of that offensive control. But I think both of them were in the top five of pick and roll usage last year as a pick and roll yeah. ball handler. And um, here, here's the issue with that. You, you, you can't both be in that on the same team. Um, like most of what DeJounte's production was, was as a pick and roll ball handler. Well, guess what? Trey Young's a little better than him at that. So like, how do you find right. the balance? But the problem is if Trey Young's running a, a set as a pick and roll ball handler, DeJounte's spotting up. He's a 32, 33% three point shooter. He's not a threat. He's condensing. If you're, if that's how you run the offense, you got worse offensively by trading Kevin Herter for DeJounte yeah. Murray. Like, they, they didn't trade them specifically for each other, but that was part of the reason Herter is gone. You got worse offensively because DeJounte Murray is not the same threat. They're going to have to be creative. I think one of the reasons that I'm most concerned, creative offensively is not a thing you say much about Nate McMillan. That is not going to yeah. be the MO that you get. Um, he is a good coach. He is a, usually a good defensive coach. He gets teams to play hard, but not exactly, you know, dialing up super creative offensive sets. They're going to have to get creative to maximize them because you also don't want Trey just being a spot up guy because he's as dynamic as there is on the ball in the NBA. Well, I, and you still have this idea as well of I still don't think John Collins and Clint Capella have quite like figured no. out that synergy of like being the role guy. Cause they're yeah. both like role rollers. rollers. That's what they're if best. They, if you could now. have two basketballs and run two pick and rolls at the same time, the Hawks might be the best team in the NBA. That's unfortunately not how basketball works. I'm just, I'm, uh, but I'm just saying they out. have two great pick and roll <laughs> tandems. Yeah, they do. Trey, they do. Clint, DeJounte and John mix and match how you want. It'd be great. It'd be great. If you could run two pick and rolls, at the same time, nobody would defend the Hawks. And by the way, you can do this like in staggered bench units. But the thing is that Trey is only going to play or only going to be off the court for what, 12 minutes a game. So yeah, like, he's got a bunch. so you it, know. it's, it's really interesting. And like, I get it. Like defensively, 
obviously it helped. You have a point of attack defender now. You did it. Yep. And I think you have three, you have a good defender at all three levels now. So you have Clint Capel at the rim. You have DeJounte yep. Murray on the outside. And you have DeAndre Hunter, who I still think is a solid wing defender on the ball. So I think yep. you can kind of handle everything there. I, I totally understand the upgrade on the defensive end. DeJounte Murray, also a pretty good rebounder uh, for a guard. So he will help them in that respect where they didn't necessarily have that all the time. However, the offense thing is really like, can they still be an elite offense with this grouping? And that's a genuine question. Like, I'm with you. Yeah. Like, if you have DeJounte Murray, Trey Young, DeAndre Hunter, or, Bo- or, or Bogdan Bogdanovich, John Collins and Clint Capella all on the floor, that's going to be your closing lineup. Either, either Bogdan or DeAndre. Like, that's spacing gets cramped with that group pretty quick. Uh, especially if yeah. Trey's on the ball and you just, I, I'm with you. Like there's, there's questions and it comes down to like, how much can, how much will Trey let DeJounte do the things that DeJounte's best at? And can they get anything out of DeJounte as an off ball player? Because he's going to have to learn how to do that. Like you just have to be better off the ball. If you're yeah. going to play with Trey Young, like you just, ha- you have to be because you can't, you can't balance ball handling duties 50 50 because then you're just giving up too much with Trey Trey's too elite at that as a passer, as a shooter, as a scorer, as a finisher, he's too elite at that to say, we're going to split this thing. No. Yeah. Like Trey is Trey is genuinely one of like the best offensive driving forces, like maybe in like league history that are under 25. Right. Like he's phenomenal. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's an exaggeration. That's how good Trey Young is. He's an incredible offensive engine. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know how DeJounte compliments that, but like I, I can see it. They working, should be better defensively though. But they're going to yeah, be better defensively, like, but it's like how much, how much better do they get defensively? How much worse do they get offensively, especially in key moments? Yeah. It's tricky. I, I think they're probably right around this number. I think I might lean under just because I think there's some other weird variables there. Like, They've been yeah. they keep trying to trade John Collins. They just keep doing it. And I don't quite get why. I guess it's because you're just in on Capella. And like you said, that fits weird. But like John Collins is a really good basketball player. But they John might, Collins is good. They might like, trade what him are we at some doing point. Here? Like he's really, really good. And he's not even on yeah. like a deal that cripples you. Like he didn't get a max deal because nobody yeah, John had John Collins money. makes like $20 million 25. a year. 25? 25? Like John Collins, when the TV deal kicks in, is going to be an incredible bargain. bargain. Like, incredible bargain. So, like, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, this is a weird. I, I don't. I don't love. What, like, I, I loved the way that I love the way that they evaluate draft picks. I think they do a really good job there. I think that's why they built up the accumulation of talent that was so valuable. Uh, I also still really like Onyeka Kongwu. They're going to get. Yeah, no, he's good. Forty-eight. They're going to get forty-eight great minutes of interior defense. They're going to yeah. get pretty good wing defense now and they're gonna have a great point of attack defender they could be a top 10 defense if things like really broke right but i, I mean here's I'm, the I'm thing gonna, though, i'm gonna like, be honest i don't know if, that, I, if they are top 10 with trey young on defense playing as much as trey young plays yeah no they're not gonna be top 10 that would be i thought they were better be i thought they were better in 2021 than they were that would be spectacular they, yeah no they no, weren't they, like, they, they could be a top, top 15 top, defense there you go yeah. if they're top half defense, i mean that's again with trey that's really good like trey's just not a good defender that's okay, because he's like he said, like he said, he's like an like all time offensive young engine. Like, yeah, that's fine, and that's why they did this move. However, you do have to understand that offensively, it's not going to be as pretty all the time. They okay. really, I think they really hope DeAndre Hunter like takes a, takes a leap. That's what they and he could. And that's what they have to yeah. bank on. Also, Bogdan needs to stay healthy, and you can't really bank on that. <laughs> 